sort of a, a Sam McGee version of a victory rag. <clears throat> Not very well played. But I did it to uh, show you what this banjo sounds like with finger picks on. And uh, we're looking at a six string guitar banjo, which is uh, rather unusual. Not the concept of a six string guitar banjo because it's one of the very first banjo hybrids that was made predates mandolin banjos and all of the kinds of uh, non finger style banjos. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, while we're in this neck of the woods, we'll see one of the reasons why it's unusual. It's uh, made by a German company called Framus or Framus. It's got a very nice uh, embossed truss rod cover there. And the, the uh, same logo is on all the individual uh, machine tuners there. While we're in that neck of the woods, you also notice that it's got a, a zero fret, which helps to uh, bring the action down at the nut there. Um, inexplicably decorated on the front there with one little bit of plastic which is lovingly described as mother of toilet seat. <laughs> um, it's a banjo, it's a, obviously a, a six string guitar banjo uh, which were ostensibly made so that lazy guitar players could play the banjo without learning anything new. Uh, but in actual fact there is a musical purpose to it because also they've got bass strings on which go, uh, you know, about, what, two-thirds of an octave below standard tuning, that, whether banjo be finger style or plectrum. Anyway, let's get a bit more specific about this. Um, one of the first things I'd say about it is it's quite big. Um, the actual resonator is well over 14 inches and it doesn't fit in a standard banjo case so be warned uh, it, it would fit in a resonator gig bag because they have a little bit more give the shape will give to them but uh, the case won't obviously uh, the rim the actual head diameter is uh, 11 and 2 sixteenths and this is a medium crown height, but it could possibly use a high crown height because the rim is just a little bit proud in the region where it joins the neck. And the string actually catches on that top and it's like an extra fret, if you like. Um, so if you wanted to replace the head, take notice of that because uh, I went through a couple of heads before I found one that fit exactly. Um, what else can we say about this? Um, for people who don't know anything about much about guitar banjos or German famous banjos in particular, this one is quite unusual. I've only seen one other vaguely like it, um, which is quite a nice sweet player and one of the odd things about it is it doesn't have many brackets, any tent tension brackets. It's only got eight in total on a banjo this size. That's quite amazing because a conventional banjo would have about 30 hooks. How do they get away with it? Well I'll try and get this into focus for you. It's got what we would describe as being drum back brackets which are a lot stronger, bigger and stronger than conventional banjo hooks. And in this case, are adjusted with a conventional Allen key. Uh, I'll supply an Allen key with the banjo for anyone who wants to buy it. Um, while we're in this neck of the woods, notice it's also got a kind of a goldy cast, but I think that's inherent with nickel plating because actually, when I'm looking at it in real daylight, it's quite silver. <laughs> um, but that's what was unusual about Framus banjos and they work quite well. In the very early days of my, me learning to play the banjo I think it was probably my second long neck banjo I got a Framus and that had these top tension Allen 
brackets on and but there there was a lot more on the five string the long neck five string than there was on this so they've probably perfected it by the time they got around to this anyway the, let's have a little bit more look at the uh, woodwork side of it um, this was in quite diabolical condition when I got it the, the lacquer was scraped off the back of the resonator and inexplicably around the heel uh, so I stripped it off and I refinished it with nitrocellulose lacquer and it was done last year so now it's kind of settled down a bit and I, I don't know if you can see this but there's actual grit crazing along the grain lines of the veneer on the resonator which uh, you could describe as being a retro look uh, if you were kind anyway it's it's quite smooth and nice and playable on the neck while we're on this driver's side of the neck there, notice that the uh, markings, fret markings, are echoed on the side, so as you know where you are. And they're black on the white binding, except the 12th fret, which is red. How about that? It's a cool little detail. Uh, it's got a lovely straight rosewood fretboard with virtually no wear to the frets or the board even in the first position so it hasn't had a lot of use um, inside um, I've already remarked on the fact that you don't have to take it apart to adjust the head but if you want to take the resonator off you would see that there's some wonderful mechanism on the uh, perch pole or dowel stick, as the Americans say, to adjust the angle of the neck. See, there's quite a, a bit of a gap there between the resonator and the heel, uh, which looks as a bit unwieldy, but in actual fact, the reason is because there's a little plate there with a couple of screws in, and you slacken that off, which slackens the set of the neck where it joins the body. And then you can adjust this manual uh, little screw device, turn screw, which will adjust the angle of the perch pole up and down. So it can adjust not just the angle of the neck, but the action of the strings. Um, while I'm talking about strings, I would uh, warn people, give people a dire warning about using conventional guitar strings on them, because they are much too heavy. Even if you used uh, an extra light gauge acoustic set it would still be in, too heavy in my opinion for a banjo uh, this uh, although I sort of individually picked these strings to go on here are a little bit heavy in my opinion and I've got a nine top on and I think it's a 46 bass on but it still feels a bit taut and tubby to me on the bass Notice it's also got a plain third string because I want it to sound more like a banjo than a guitar. And I've actually compensated what was originally quite a hefty bridge to uh, hopefully make the intonation a bit more accurate. There's the tailpiece which is designed for normal ball end strings. That's also adjustable on the end, so you can raise the, or lower the height. And uh, what else can we say about it? Uh, right, just to reiterate the statement that uh, whilst people originally bought these banjos who were guitarists and didn't want to go to the trouble of learning anything new on the, a banjo, uh, Actually, it's one of the worst things you can do that is to try and play a guitar banjo like you would a conventional guitar. From the point of view of, if you strum it indiscriminately, it sounds absolutely awful. It just sounds like a bag of hammers. <laughs> so uh, I would sort of admonish you to try and play it very sparingly and be more judicious about hitting individual notes and partial chords rather than playing complete um, massive opening chords. Now, 
just to go against that, I'm going to finish off by playing a, a little number which just has uh, uses some open chords on it. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm going to tickle in my throat. Uh, I, I, I played something that I thought might be a little Sam McGee-ish uh, from the po finger style point of view earlier. Now I'm going to play something that I think might be sort of atypical of uh, one of my favourite banjoists who used a guitar banjo uh, because he was so understated in the way he played uh, that you could hear every note and he and his favourite method of playing was single bass notes with partial chords and that was Johnny Sincere who played on the early uh, Louis Armstrong albums uh, records there weren't albums in those days sorry <laughs> But the, there is a con connection between the tune that I'm playing, which most people would associate with the 12 string guitar, because Eric da Darling introduced this song to the general public, and it was also the first uh, use of a 12 string guitar in the hit parade, as far as I can recollect. Uh, he came over and played uh, this little tune with his rooftop singers which was originally recorded way, way back when uh, by a fella called Gus Cannon and his Jug Stompers who were a little good time jazz outfit who used uh, corn liquor jugs <laughs> as bass instruments on, on racks around the neck so as he could play his banjo at the same time and uh, he played this little tune which was called Walk right in. I'm not going to sing it for you. I'm just going to play you the basic riff. Okay. Hope you enjoyed this little ramble about the guitar banjo. And if you see it on eBay, you might even fancy giving me a bit. Okay. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Walk right in. Have a good day. Thanks for watching. Bye now.